I'm working on this 3D model of an R44 helicopter, and this video today is an update on the progress. There's a rotor brake in this version, along with cockpit flight controls. The rotor brake is a device that allows the drive system to stop after the pilot shuts down the engine. It stops the drive system with friction pads that clamp onto the drive shaft yoke when the pilot activates the brake. Although rotor brakes in some aircraft are designed to hold the rotors with the engines operating, in the R44 it's only intended for use during aircraft shutdown. And right now the upper link on the rotor brake in this model moves much more than it does on the real aircraft. I need to adjust the location of the pivot point to make it more realistic. The cockpit flight controls include the pilot and co-pilot collective levers, the shared center cyclic stick, and the pilot and co-pilot tail rotor pedals. The T-Bar cyclic stick has a removable co-pilot grip and I haven't added that to the 3D model yet. You can see in the video the controls move with the main and tail rotor controls, but I haven't yet completed the push rods, bell cranks, and walking beams needed to connect the rotor controls to the controls in the cockpit. That's a future effort. The thing I spent the most time on in this version of the model isn't something that I added to the model, instead it's something I took away. This is the animation workspace in Blender, and now with the engine running, the rotors turning, and the flight controls moving, all of this is happening without any keyframes. It's been my goal with these models to make them more like simulations rather than animations. And up until now, I've been doing that mostly with drivers, custom properties, and Python script. But my models always relied on keyframes to start and stop some of the motions. I was never able to completely make this into an event-based simulation until this version of the model. Blender introduced simulation nodes a few releases ago. These nodes are a graphical programming language that allows creation of simulation blocks that loop whenever the timeline is playing. I still use those other tools, Drivers, Custom Properties, and Python. In fact, all three of those are integrated in with the simulation nodes. But the addition of these simulation nodes was the final piece that allowed me to make this a simulation without keyframes. For my purposes, simulation is much better than a keyframed animation. Now I don't need to plan the timing and order of events, I just operate this model as if it were a real helicopter. I'll give an example. To start the engine in an R44 helicopter, the pilot follows a checklist. I won't go through all of the steps, I'll leave out the things that I don't have modeled, but those checklist steps are collective full down, cyclic neutral, pedals neutral, rotor brake disengaged, clutch disengaged, throttle closed, and then starter engaged. Once the engine is operating, the pilot engages the clutch and waits for the rotor blades to start turning within 5 seconds. And to continue that example, once in flight, if the engine fails, the upper and lower pulleys coast to a stop. This isn't pilot controlled, but it happens automatically because of the internal sprag clutch. And to continue flying without engine power, the pilot lowers the collective lever and auto rotates to the ground. Once the aircraft is on the ground without engine power, the rotors will slowly coast to a stop, but the pilot can apply the rotor brake to shorten the time it takes the rotors to stop. So for me, with this model behaving like a simulation, making these videos is easier, faster, and more intuitive because I can now operate this virtual model as if it's a real helicopter. With keyframes, I'd have to plan out specific times when all of these events happen, but with the simulation, I just follow normal helicopter procedures. And if I ever distribute this thing, like I did with the Blackhawk model, it will be a more user-friendly tool for people to use to learn about helicopters. I am planning to make more progress on the 3D model. Specifically, I plan to improve the upper flight controls by adding the adjustable links to the pitch change rods. I plan to add bending to the main rotor blades. Right now, blade coning is modeled at the coning hinge, but the blades don't have a spanwise bending degree of freedom. And real blade coning is a combination of these two things, both motion about the hinge and bending. I also plan to add all of the hardware that links the cockpit controls to the main and tail rotor controls. And I'm also starting to notice here that the cockpit controls are difficult to visualize. I thought I might add some furniture to the model. 
may be floorboards or the instrument panel. My models usually just include dynamic components, but maybe some of that additional structure might help better visualize things. And I'm open to other suggestions. If there's other things you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. This channel is getting bigger than I ever expected, and it's hard for me to stay up with all of those comments. I still read many of them. Even if I can't reply to them all, I get quite a bit of inspiration and better ideas from reading your ideas about this work and questions about how I explain things. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks also for commenting and making this channel into a true learning community. I'll see you on the next video.